Hello guys and welcome to part 18 of my Alonso career mode for the Brazilian Grand Prix. There are just two races to go and only seven points separate Alonso and Hamilton in the fight for the Drivers Championship. And the drivers, and they seem to push even harder than they do at other circuits. The circuit has always provided some exciting races, including Vettel's 2012 championship winning drive, despite getting hit after turn four in the first lap. So, with the championship still undecided, who knows what might happen over the course of the weekend. Turns one, two, and three that form the Senna S are a series of tight left, right, left turns that really are an extremely difficult sequence of corners to master. The first turn runs downhill left-handed and provides massive understeer. Uh, it's then followed by a fast right-left combination through the Curva de Sol and onto the Retta Aposta Strait. Added in 1990, when F1 Racing returned to Interlagos, it is fitting that one of the best corners on the F1 calendar takes its name from one of the sport's greatest drivers, Ayrton Senna. Get this section wrong and you'll leave yourself open for the overtake on the approach to Turn 4. And, of course, as usual, we will retire from qualifying to start from 22nd on the grid. And he certainly did it in qualifying yesterday. He starts in the Williams from P1 and has every chance of holding that until the end of the race. It's certainly better for a driver to be out in front, as they're able to drive without having to contend with the dirty air and overheating caused by being sat behind another car. It was an excellent showing from the Red Bull team at the last race. They'll be hoping for a similar level of performance here again today. It was a good weekend for them. The car certainly looked to handle better than we've seen earlier in the season. They're bringing new upgrades this weekend too, which they'll hope will further improve performance. So here we are for the start of the Brazilian Grand Prix, we've got five lights, lights out and away we don't go. For the penultimate time this season we wait 10 seconds before we eventually set off in pursuit of 21 other Formula 1 drivers. And as we come to the end of the first lap we are 2.1 seconds behind Kobayashi in the cage room. As we talk about the Japanese driver we are now attempting to overtake him for P21 around the outside and we make the move stick. Our next target is Max Chilton who we immediately dispose of. Do we? Yes we do. And now we've got Marcus Ericsson in the other cage room for P19 just in front of us. And we're going to go up the inside are we? Yes we make the move stick once again. So P19 on the prime tyres. And now we are attacking Adrian Sutil in the Sauber for P18 and maybe even Maldonado for P17. We break late and make the move stick once again. Superb driving from Fernando Alonso. And now for P16 we go up the inside of Esteban Gutierrez. And we dispose him no problem. Next target is Jean-Eric Verne. We get a great exit out of the last turn. And now we are going to attempt, I think, with DRS to overtake Jules Bianchi and maybe even Romain Grosjean. And Bianchi actually coming into the back of Grosjean there, had nowhere to go, and that's two, another two spots for us there, P13. Soon to be P12 as we pass Kvyat there. So now we've got the two McLarens and two Force Indias next up, and we dispose of Jensen Button on lap 5. And now coming to the end of that same lap, onto lap 6, we are going to try and get Kevin Magnussen into turn 1 to get into the top 10. And looks like we may have made the move stick, have we? Nope, Magnussen, he's, he's braved it out on his option tyres, but if, as long as we keep him boxed in, I don't think there's anything he can do. So I think P10, maybe even P9 as we go up the inside of Hulkenberg, and it is going to be P9, we get past two McLaren and a Force India. Now we've just got one more Force India to take care of before we can set off in pursuit of our teammate Kimi Raikkonen but f for the time being P Perez is putting up a strong fight but not for long up to P8 we go and now lap 8 we dispose of our teammate Kimi Raikkonen and now our next target is Daniel Ricciardo for P6 in the Red Bull and we've got a couple of drivers making their first stops now which is gonna put us up into P3 so We've now got just Bottas and Rosberg ahead of us, who we're about to attempt an overtake on. So despite starting on prime tyres, we are absolutely flying through the field at the moment. 
And we're going to go right around the outside of Bottas. What a fantastic move from the Spaniard. And with Rosberg pitting at the end of lap 9, we are up to P1. Heavy rain in around 15 minutes time. 15 minutes. So, we got heavy rain on the way, which means that we are likely to see both the intermediate and wet tyres make an appearance during this race. But anyway, that's for later on this race, because at the end of lap 11, we make our first stop of the race and put on a set of option tyres coming out just behind Daniel Ricciardo and the home favourite, Felipe Massa. And we dispose of Ricciardo. Nope, not quite, because we do make contact there. But hopefully, we can go for a move up the inside at the next corner. Indeed, we do, and we are now up to P5, so... Next up, we will overtake Alonso's former teammate, Felipe Massa, for P4. And it looks as though we're going to get the move down before we get to the center S. And indeed, we do up to P4. Our next target now is Sebastian Vettel for a place on the podium. We're going to get a brilliant exit out of that corner. And we're going to go around the outside. Yes, we do. Vettel backs off. And he has no answer for our pace. Heavy rain arriving in under 10 minutes. So another warning there from Jeffrey about the incoming weather changes. And as we start lap 17, we are now overtaking Nico Rosberg for P2. Next up, just over three seconds up the road, is Lewis Hamilton, our main championship rival. I think he pits at the end of lap 17. Indeed he does. And we then pit a lap later to plant another set of options. But as you may be able to tell, it has now started raining. And it's already raining quite heavily, so I think this could be a very, very short stint on the options as we come out just behind Lewis Hamilton. But as we can see here, we are carrying so much more speed than the Mercedes driver, losing the back end though, so again, that shows that, you know, these are not ideal conditions now for the options. And indeed, one lap later, we are we have to come in again to stick on a set of intermediate tyres. So on these tyres, can we take advantage of Hamilton's reluctance through the corners perhaps? Well, we'll see, but we're definitely carrying more speed on the exit of corners compared to the Mercedes. So it could only be, only be a matter of time before we take P1 and pull away from the British driver. But unfortunately, as we pit for a set of full wets, we are held in the pit by one of the Mana Marushas, which gives Lewis a bit of a lead on us. But hopefully, with the immense speed we've shown earlier in the race, we can close that gap up pretty quickly. But before that, we have to um, deal with some traffic. I think that was Kobayashi a few seconds ago, and then Pastor Maldonado. But now, coming to the end of lap 24, we are right on the back of Hamilton, and we're going to go up the inside, I think. He may have been held up slightly by Adrian Sutil. And we do take P1 once again. But now, lap 26. We are having to defend from the Mercedes. He has much more straight line speed compared to us. But, no, actually, I think... Yes, we did. I thought we was going to come back to this then, but we held on to the position. But now, lap 27, we run wide, get quite a poor exit... We go out offline and we actually go off track there, so clearly not a lot of grip out there, and that causes us to drop behind Hamilton once again. But now, coming on to the start of lap 28, we are going to attempt to overtake the British driver once again. We outbreak him, but we actually outbreak ourselves there, and Hamilton comes back at us, but we're going to keep it up the inside, are we? We do, but Hamilton once again holds. His line and he retains P1 as we run wide once again. But we will not give up. We have a grey exit out of that corner and we're going to try and go round the outside, are we? Nope, we run out of track again and we have to stay behind Lewis for the time being. But now, lap 29 and we have another Sauber to deal with and we're going to try and go round the outside once again of Lewis. And we pull it off this time? Yes, we have. That is a superb move from the Ferrari driver. And we now deal with Gutierrez. But at the end of lap 30, we have to make another stop now. This time to switch back onto the Inters, because the track is now drying out, of course. 
And yeah, Hamilton's got the jump on us again. So once again, I don't know how many times we have, we've overtaken this race, but we're definitely going to have to do it at least one more time. And look at the speed we're carrying for that corner compared to the Mercedes. He is crawling along. And we're going to go around the outside again, hopefully. We break a bit late. He tries to run us out of the road, but we're going to hold on there, I think. No, we have to back out of it. But at the end of lap 33, Hamilton is now making what should be his final stop of the race for another set of uh, options, which we do a lap later. I thought the, dra the track wasn't dry enough at the time, so I went one lap longer than the Mercedes. Will that pay off for us? Nope. He comes out just in front of us, but as we're coming to the end of the penultimate lap, we are right on the back of the Mercedes driver. He is getting slipstream from Jean Egbert, so I could make it more difficult to overtake him. Actually, no, though, because we have pulled alongside him and we have cleared him, I think. Nope, he's still alongside us as we start the last lap. We're going to have to try and hold it around the outside. And it looks as though we have pulled it off. But now, he will surely get the second DRS zone on us. And we're going to have to defend down into turn four. He's attacking. He is ahead, but we're going to try and break him. I think we have... But no, he's held it. He's taken the lead from us once again. But he's going defensive now. Not many more opportunities now for us to beat Lewis. And we're going to go around the outside, are we? I think we have. We've held it. What a fantastic move from Fernando Alonso. But then he outbreaks himself and gives Lewis another chance to overtake him once again. As Nico Rosberg sets the fastest lap. But no one cares about that. Because Fernando Alonso is going to come across the line to win the Brazilian Grand Prix. Fantastic drive from Alonso. So, confirmation of the result. We do win the Brazilian Grand Prix by just under a second from Lewis, with Nico Rosberg finishing a distant third place, 36 seconds behind. And for the Drivers' Championship, we are now 14 points ahead, with just the double points round in Abu Dhabi to go. And for that race, I think we will ideally need to finish ahead of Lewis to be certain of winning the Drivers' Championship. But that'll be it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you for the season finale.